Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today's video is about SDXL control nets in Comfy UI. At the moment there are only a couple available, namely Canny Edge and Depth, but as more come out, the same principles shown here will apply then as well. In case you've got no idea what Stable Diffusion SDXL is all about, basically it's a way to generate images from text using AI. I'm running Comfy UI for SDXL locally here, so if you need more information on that, do check out the other videos I've done on getting Comfy UI installed and running. This video is a more advanced one intended for those already using Comfy UI and who now want to use ControlNet as well. While there are some ControlNet examples already available, they don't really deal with SDXL specifically, but they're still useful for a more general overview. Okay, so first up, where can you get the SDXL control net models from? Well, if you head over to the Hugging Face Diffusers page, then you'll see everything which is available at the moment. Right now, there's lots of different files, but basically only two models, one being canny and the other being depth. The one I'm using at the moment, the full-sized control nets, but you can see here, they've also got small-sized control nets as well, which is a much smaller download. Downloading is simple, you just click the link for whatever you want and that will take you to the model card. Here's the one for SDXL control net depth, for example, click files and versions and you'll see all the files available. Now the one I downloaded was the FP16 safe tensors version, which as you can see is a little bit bigger than those other files. You want to click download on that and the default location for Comfy UI is the control net directory which is underneath models. There it is, Comfy UI models, and it says put control nets and T2I here. You're also going to need some control net preprocessors as well as those models, so head on over to this GitHub web page for those as well, the control net preprocessors for Comfy UI. Start with the download into the Comfy UI custom nodes directory by copying and pasting the commands shown. So there I'm just running the git clone. Obviously I've already run that so it says hey you've already downloaded that. Next you'll need to run the installer but this is where the documentation falls over as trying to run the install command just won't work here because obviously you need to pass that different things and it's nothing related to this repository at all. What they actually mean is to run one of the two files there so either install.sh or install.bat. So in my case, if I can type, it would be install.sh. If you're on Windows, you would use the .bat file. There you go. You've now got everything you need to run SDXL control nets. Fire up Comfy UI and you can add these into your workflow. In true nerdy style, here is one I made earlier. This is about as basic as it gets. So as you can see, we've got the control net image there. The control net model, that's where we load them. I've only got two options in there, canny or depth. A little upscale there to make sure the image is of a reasonable size. Canny processor or the depth processor, depending on which one I'm doing. If I want to use the depth processor, I just have to connect that one or I can go back to the canny. And then finally, we've got the apply control net and the preview image as well. So that's it, pretty straightforward, just eight nodes in total, with the only thing you'll need to do is to wire this into your existing workflow via the apply control nets. As you can see, it's got a positive and a negative input and the same type on the output there. If you just want to go ahead and download everything there, I've got the SDXL depth badger, so you can download that PNG file and you will have this Comfy UI all already connected. But I'll show you how to add it into your own as well here. For the first one there, we've got load control net model. So I'll just show you where these are. So that's add node, loaders, and of course, load control net model image. That is in the image section. So we've got add node, image and then you've got load image upscale image is over there in upscaling upscale image then we've got canny now canny is actually in here so you see we've got two places for preprocessors that's the lot we added and this is the default one in here so preprocessing canny is the canny one and the depth as mentioned is in that slightly different place so preprocessors 
depth. And there we've got the Zoe depth. Apply control net advanced. That's over in conditioning. So we've got add node, conditioning, apply control net and apply control net advanced. Apply control net doesn't have the start and end percentages on it. Root is just a utility. So you can add node, utilities, root and a preview image is obviously the image again. So you can add node, image, preview image. And I'm using the default SDXL workflow here, showed in my previous video, basically the same one you download from the Comfy Anonymous example site, but I've just moved the boxes. So that's that workflow underneath. As mentioned before, all you've got is the positive and negative inputs and outputs. So you basically just need to add two wires in and then connect those back. Let's move this up a bit so we can see that. So here we've got the base prompt conditioning. So there's the positive, we connect the green one in there. There's the negative, we connect the red one in there. Then we've got the two positive and negatives and that goes into the K sampler there. So we've got the positive and there we've got the negative. And now you have wired in your control nets. Obviously, if you're looking to add SDXL control nets to a different workflow, then you'll need to find the matching nodes, but it's just two wires in and two wires out. All right, that's all very well and good, but what can we do with this thing? As you can see, I've got an example set up there with some text, and this text is one thing that works great with Canny Edge. If we set the strength to one, for example, and the end percentage to one as well, and generate that prompt, you'll see the preview appears. So there's the Canny Edge outline with the preview being down there. So as you can see, that's very, very clear if you use the full power control net, so to speak. The, uh, the text prompt down here has almost been completely ignored as it's meant to be a picture of an anthropomorphic badger. I mean, that's, that's not a badger, it's just text, isn't it? So what you want to do, if you want to give it a little bit more imagination, is drop this strength down. I like to use something less than 0.75 for the strength and the end percentage somewhere around 0.6. This time, when I generate something like that as well, and with the lower strength and end percentage, then SDXL can be a bit more creative, so you get the text and the badger as well. Of course, you can use whatever style you like, such as ice cream, or eggshells, or maybe bread, or peppers, or graffiti. Anyway, Canny Edge isn't just for text, so feel free to explore using non-traditional shapes for badgers. For example, there's a very non-traditional shape for a badger down there in my prompt. I've just got a photo of a badger that looks nothing like a badger, but the power of control net will give me this result. And as you can see, we've got a perfectly normal badger. For the depth model, all you have to do is change this. So you select the depth model and then I wire in the depth preprocessor instead. And there he is, all sort of hedgehog-like and everything. You can use text with the depth model as well. However, it does come out a little bit blurry on the depth map, as you can see there. The text still comes out quite all right, but it's, you know, not quite as good as the canny edge. And there we go. We've got our badger in the background and the text powering on through there. So personally, I find the depth model much better for non-text. Again, you can drop the strength and the start and end percentage if you like, but generally speaking, the depth model has a bit more creativity due to all the gradients in that depth map. So it's much better, as mentioned, for shape. So we can change that kitten, for example, into something much more appropriate. Down here, we've got the prompt which is a photo of a badger. So hopefully we can change this kitten into a badger. And there we go. Let's just have a quick look at that output. So there we've got the depth map and there we have the matching badger. Lovely. As you can see, it's really easy to add control nets to Comfy UI for SDXL. And when the new models come out, you should be able to just download those and pop in your preprocessors in much the same way. If you thought that was cool, but want to know more about Comfy UI, then check out this next Nerdy Rodent video.